So if you're just a backyard gardener or you know another market farmer, smaller, bigger, larger, you start six, eight, ten plants, or you start six, eight, ten thousand plants. Subscribe to our channel. I'm I'm sure you'll find something on here useful. So full disclaimer, all the plants that I'm working with today are hardened off. Do not take this approach with plants that are not hardened off because they're not going to make it. Make sure that you have taken the proper steps to harden your plants off before you put them outside. Good morning, guys. Welcome back to Lick Branch Farms. It is a calm, cool, not cold, cool January morning. It's January the 23rd, and today's video is going to be about bed prep. It's going to be about getting the ground ready to plant your transplants into. But before we get into that, guys, if you haven't subscribed to our channel and you're into gardening, market farming, um, things of that nature, go ahead and click that subscribe button and click the bell notification so you get notified every time we put out a new video. All right, guys, so we have been talking a lot about seed starting. We have been talking a lot about what we, the method that we go through to start our seeds, the media that we use, the trays that we use, um, different odds and ends about getting seeds in trays to get a good transplant out of and we've got those seeds in trays we've got them started um, they have germinated we got them under grow lights or they're in the high tunnel and now we need to get ready to put them in a bed we need to put them where they're going to spend the rest of their life outside indoors or under protective culture greenhouse you know low tunnel whatever so i'm gonna go through and give you the method that i use and what works for me and it holds true for brassicas squash zucchini tomatoes peppers you know just about any kind of plant i have you i use this method on everything that i plant indoors or out and i'll try to explain every step of the way um and the reason why i do it that way i have changed my planting habits over the years to where this is the method that i have found that works great it works good for me and um you know it keeps we keep adding to it every year and things keep getting better um and they'll they'll be little things that i add as we go along as i'm explaining this and i'll tell you why um, we do certain things this certain kind of way what i'm gonna do is try to explain to you from start to finish how we get our transplants in the ground and time of year has a lot to do with it too right now you see it's cloudy overcast and that's a great time to transplant something into the garden you don't want to plant young tender plants uh transplants outside when it's hot when the sun's baking them when they're already stressed enough because when you pluck them out of this tray and you can see here i've got some lettuce i've got some this is sky folks and this is new red fire and I'm going to transplant these guys out today in these new beds I got pulled up in this new tunnel. But so when you pluck these guys up out of this tree, you can see they're a little overcrowded, but they're going to have a leaf on them that doesn't look all that great. But we'll pluck that off. But yeah, you see, these guys are just reached the bottom of that sail with the root. So this is a perfect time to get them outside. And doing that, they're going to be a little stressed. Now, when you pull them out of what they've known their whole life, it's going to stress them a little bit. Now, now during the winter time you can get away with a lot more transplanting than you can during the summertime for sure now during the uh, summertime i go straight from that tray into what i call a daisy flat which i know you guys have seen them it's got the web bottom in it um it's what you see in the big box store when they put uh, plants in them so i take one of those guys and i'll lay 10 maybe 12 starts in those trays and i won't pull any more out until i've got those planted just so they stay in you know those trays as long as possible now during the winter time um what you'll probably see me do today is i'll go through and once i get all my holes in and i'll show you a trick to that too once i get all the holes for my transplants in then i'll go and start plucking those transplants out of that tray and laying them down right beside where i'm gonna plant them it's cool out here it's right at 40 degrees we're you know we're probably not going to get much more than 50 today it's overcast the sun's not beating down the ground's got a little bit of moisture in it but you know there again once we get everything in the ground we want to water them in but yeah there's <clears throat> there's little tips and tricks that i'll try to explain to you along the way but first i'm gonna carry you down here at the end of this row and show you what we do from start to finish how we get the ground ready prep to receive the transplants that we worked so hard to get started all right guys so what we the method that we use to plan on is a 30 inch market bed basically what that means is that bed is 30 inches wide and however long we we run on a 50 foot bed in our tunnels and a 100 foot bed outside we do have a 50 foot bed plot that's outside but that's where our root crops are going to be and all that good stuff but 
just for the sake of this video i'm going to try to stay just in this new tunnel that we're putting together this guy right here you see the base you've seen it in several videos this is going to be um the tunnel that we're going to finish construction on here maybe hopefully in the next month but i need to get those transplants out of that tray they're getting you know a little big and i also need to get some more lettuce in the ground because i've got the last row that i'm finishing up on and then i got another row that is just getting close to being able to cut and we're going into our early spring markets we got a market on saturday that's going to start the middle of march this year um which is almost a month a little over a month earlier than usual so i want to get some more lettuce in the ground and get it started that way i've got plenty on hand when we need to go to market and if lettuce is a big hit in the two new markets that we're going to be going to then we're going to need everything we can get and it has since rained a few times and kind of beat them in but i still got the broad fork and all that good stuff but you know kind of getting ahead of myself but here is a 30 inch bead now from this to here is 30 inches inside and you can see where i basically just filled it up with dirt or shoveled it in and kind of leveled it off this bed i did the same thing to broad fork but i mulch this bed you know we got a compost pile over here and what i do is basically shovel that into my sifting pan and sift out the big material and i use that to start building my beds with now you can see this soil here it's it's not horrible but it's real sandy and it doesn't have a lot of biomass and it doesn't have a lot of mulch or compost or anything like that in it so we did grow in it last year and it did okay but we had to use a lot of amendments to get those plants to you know respond like they should all right so we went through we laid off a bed we got a 30 inch bed and i use these strings as guides just to kind of keep me straight um one big thing you guys ought to know i have a big problem with things that are not straight i call it what you will everybody in my family will tell you if you're going to do something with me it better be straight because i am going to freak out if it's not all right so this bed here under this tarp has already been mulched um it's been laying like that for a couple of weeks and you can see the line on it but yeah what we do is basically like i said sift I say sift big stuff but we sift the compost that we got and we make a, a pretty solid bed and you can see i'm gonna dig down that's probably a good three inches deep so yeah there's plenty there and what's going to happen is over time this stuff is going to break down into more even more and it's going to leach into the soil and that's a good thing that's what we want and when we do a bed flip once we take all of the plants or we utilize all the vegetables out of a row we'll cut them off at the ground we won't pull the roots up we'll cut them off at the ground and we'll take another layer of mulch and we'll put on top of that maybe not a stick but maybe an inch too just to kind of freshen it up a bit and when we do that we'll put amendments back in with that and we'll kind of start from scratch uh, per se and basically just put plants back in again so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna pull this uh this weed mat off and we're going to rake it out to kind of level it up a little bit because it has got a little wavy since it rained but we're going to rake it out just a little bit and then i'm gonna go through and show you how we put amendments in how we get our holes started for our transplants and then how we lay everything off All right, guys, so we got our bed raked down, and now it's time to put the amendments on. Your amendments, um, depending on whether you use synthetic or organic, and um, if you use synthetic fertilizer, basically you can get a bag of 10, 10, 10, or triple 17, or triple 19, and basically go through and sprinkle a, a balanced fertilizer on this bed and then kind of rake it in. But since we're on the organic side of things, we have to use something, you know, a little bit uh, different. And what I use when I start a bed is garden tone and blood meal uh, blood meal is going to give you the um, organic nitrogen that you need at a rate of about 12 percent and the garden tone has uh, the potassium and the phosphorus in it to where it also has about three percent nitrogen so what i've got in this bucket here is about five pounds of garden tone and i've got uh, about two pounds of blood meal mixed with it so combined we probably got about a 15 percent uh nitrogen ratio going into the soil and then we still got on the you know a four four which is potassium and phosphorus but um right now 
what the nitrogen is going to do is give these plants that little bit of boost to put on new growth um and it works a little slower than synthetics but once we get this on and get it raked in we get the plants put in the ground we're going to run drip tape in here so what we'll wind up doing is we'll wind up feeding these plants through the drip tape just for a little bit until we start seeing you know a lot of growth on these new lettuce plants then we know that the nitrogen has actually broken down into the soil and is being able to be utilized by the plant so i mean you'll be able to tell because it's like everything will get a, just a burst of energy and then it'll take off and what we want to do then is we want to let the plants feed off what's in the soil and just you know kind of give them a little bit alone through the drip tape just to give them an added nutrient boost so what we're going to do now is I'm going to go down through here with this bucket and I'm going to sprinkle it by hand. And you can do it however you want to. A lot of people use drop seeders or drop spreaders. I'm going to go down there and try to sprinkle it in by hand and then I'll take the rake again and kind of blend it in. And then we'll get to laying off the, uh, the holes for the plants. All right, guys, so we got our amendments in. We got everything raked in. Now it's time to go down here and dimple the row. This is where we're going to put the transplants into the ground. And I built a jig years ago um, that I used for green onions and lettuce and things that I do three wide spacing on. And it's a, I call it a three by six. It's three wide and it's six inches apart. So six inches by six inches. And on a 30 inch bed, this is what it ends up looking like. And basically you go down there and just stick this plywood down and you can do nine holes per drop every time you put that board down it's going to do nine holes i've got some bigger ones in there that do a lot more but it's just aggravating handling it um, it's really a two-person board but um i've also got some four uh three by fours or excuse me a six by fours that's uh six inches apart and they four wide now i use that mainly for beets and uh, i have used it for lettuce before but i don't like using it for that because of the um ventilation issue trying to get air between the plants three wide works better for lettuce in my opinion i know a lot of people will use a four wide but most of the people that do four wide are on a 48 inch bed all right so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna go down through here and i'm gonna dimple some of these holes and kind of give you an idea how this works i probably won't do the whole thing right now i'll go ahead and dimple you know 10 or 12 feet and then go ahead and put some starts in and go ahead and set them in the ground and show you how we do that All right, so this is the part that gives you a little bit of time to go through and pull off any leaves that looks like they're in pretty bad shape or rough shape. So, and you can see it leaves enough room in here and we're gonna put all this on drip. So we'll have enough room that we can get the drip tape in between them. And we won't do all that today, but we will get a drip line put in here. I'm gonna run a main header across here anyway. And you can see I got this set up to where the end post for the high tunnel is right here and i'm gonna have to run a string across and make sure i square this up but we don't want to go past that this high tunnel is going to have scissor doors on it to where they kind of open up and we can get ventilation all the way through so i don't want to go past that it'll just wind up messing it up anyway so we're going to go down through here and pluck these in the ground it might take a little bit but you guys get the general idea we're going to clean them up and then some of these are a little dry that's okay though this ground's pretty damp and we'll get them in and probably what we're going to wind up doing is going back when we're getting done and just uh overhead water it by hand to start with for the first time and then uh we're supposed to get some rain today but it doesn't look like that's going to happen now 
right guys so i haven't been at it but a few minutes but you can see this is pretty much what we're shooting for leave enough line to put two drip takes in here and uh we still got enough room in it the air can get in there and circulate and uh keep the moisture down but yeah looking good so far and i'm i'm out of new red fire i pulled everything out of this tray and that's pretty much nothing but this is what i got to left for that and then i'll switch over to skyphos and then we'll finish that row off but yeah i'm gonna go ahead and get after it and whenever i get done i'll give you guys a shot of what we end up with all right guys and just like that we're finished it is uh we've got a lot of new red fire on the front end of this it stops like right here and then we switch over to skyphos and then it goes down a little ways and then i ran out so i plugged some uh pearl onions that i had in trays in there and uh you know onions are a pretty good companion plant with lettuce anyway so we'll run the drip tape here in the next few days and get these guys off to the races i'm gonna get out here after a while um and overhead water them or water them in by hand and then we're going to get started on this bed here i got to finish broad forking it and then we're going to get some compost sifted and go ahead and get this bed put in here but tonight i'll go ahead and start these trays again with lettuce um it's going to be a constant thing from here on out i'll have to keep uh a 338 and a 162 on hand for each variety it takes 300 head or 300 plants like this to plant a 50 foot row and if we do 100 foot rows it takes 600 plants so you know i always do a 338 and a 162 when i do them and uh this time i had a lot that came out that didn't come out right i mean you can see this pile right here that's what you know either broke off or it just didn't feel good to me and we put all the good plants we had in here so that's going to give us a pretty good start all right guys so i'm gonna get off of here i got uh this bed here i'm gonna finish broad forking it and then i'm gonna get over here and start sifting some mulch put on this bed get it amendment and get it ready i got some kohlrabi in here that is uh actually ready to go out and what i put in the high tunnel there back late fall is done excellent in that high tunnel so i'm gonna try some in this one and we're just gonna start plugging plants in here the best thing for your soul is to actually get something growing in it so keep that in mind yeah so check back in with us later on this week we'll have something else coming out i've got some pepper seeds coming in we need to get germinated i've got some uh some more roma tomatoes and a few other things that's being a mail here for too much longer and i got a mess of cabbage and broccoli coming all right guys so we're gonna move on to the next project as always we appreciate you stopping by we thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one